welcome to Leap Into Embroidery, brought to you by EmbroideryDesigns.com. My name is Debbie Cleek, and I'm from Embroidery Software. I'll be your guide today as we go through the many software titles brought to you by Embroidery Software. We've got a lot to cover, so let's get started. Okay, here we are at my desktop. The first thing we're going to do is move over here and double click on the Embroidery demo. When that opens up, we want to make sure that there's a check mark in Essentials and click OK. Now, here we are in Embrilliance Essentials, and we're going to talk about um, sizing and just anything else that tickles my fancy that we might want to talk about in Embrilliance Essentials. <clears throat> Excuse me. So the first thing we're going to talk about is sizing. The one thing that Embrilliance Essentials does very, very, very well is sizing. Okay, so I'm going to go to File, Merge Stitch File. I'm going to bring a file in for my demo designs, probably this little butterfly design here. Click on that, click Import, and there is my design. It shows up by um, sewing steps here in my object tree or object view. It shows up by color here in my properties. To change my color, I would simply click on one of these color chips, the box would open, and I could change the color to whatever I want. Whatever I would like, I can make my butterflies but, and scrolls, whatever color I want to. Okay, so let's talk about sizing for a minute. I can click on this corner here and I can size it smaller and I can size it bigger. And my stitch count will adjust accordingly. It started out at 10,647 stitches and now it is at 12,568,000 stitches. Okay, and that's all well and good. Let's do the undo button a couple of times and get back to the original. Here we go. Let's center this design in the hoop. Let's hold our shift key down and size our design because you notice when I sized it before grabbing this corner here, it sized in and out from just this corner. If I hold my shift key down and size my design, see how it sizes from the center, in and out. Okay, we also have a fit to hoop button. What that will allow us to do is click a single time and size the design, the maximum allowable size to uh, fill the hoop that's selected on your design page. Okay, I have the, two by, the 200 by 200 hoop. You can see that by looking at the bottom of the screen that's listed there. And it also gives you the size, which is 190 by 181 in millimeters. So it sizes this design 213% to allow it to fill this hoop. Okay. So another thing I want to tell you about when it comes to sizing, first of all, don't forget when the next time you size, to hold down that shift key and size from the center out, it can save you a lot of manipulation of your design, trying to move it back up and over and where, you know, where it should have been in the first place. Okay. And then I want to let you know that whatever specialty stitches or um, specialty fills you have in your design, they will be maintained when you're sizing your design. So if you have some decorative fill or some motifs or some specialty stitches, like maybe a stem stitch or a back stitch or a, a um, bean stitch, 
it will not denigrate those stitches. They will say just the way they, they will say just as pristine as when you first brought the design in, no matter how large or small you size the design. Now keep in mind sometimes size and design so small is not the best for particular stitches. So you may not get a desired result, but that's because you're trying to do something that that stitch just isn't able to do. That happens to us sometimes. Okay, let's get a new design page and talk about something else that I think doesn't get talked about very much, and that is the grid lines. How many of you knew that you could pull out grid lines from the ruler and place them on your design page? Yes, sir, Mister, you sure can. And now I've got some uh, guidelines set up on my design page, and I'm going to bring in some text. I'm going to click on my text button here. I'm going to click on circle text, and I'm going to type in just a little bit of text. Hit enter. I'm going to size this down just a scope so it fits in the hoop. Let's undo this. Let's hold down my shift key and size this down just a bit so it fits in my hoop. Let's move it up to the top. And now let's work with our radius. I want to fit between those two lines, but it's still a little bit large. So I'm going to hold down my shift key again and size it a little bit smaller. Use my radius. Move it up. Use my radius. Center it in the hoop, move it up with the arrow keys. There we go. Now I've got some text, and if I want to use this as a template, say I'm doing a number of things that I need to fit in that, you know, arc text to fit within that area, I can use this as a template for other projects. Say I'm using different names or something. And I want them to be the similar size. I now have a template to use for all the other projects that I have using this same thing. I mean, maybe I'm doing golf shirts or uh, some kind of team shirt, a golf team or a softball team or a baseball team. You know, that's the grid line. They, the grid lines are movable after you put them on your screen. So if I decided I wanted to rearrange them, see how it turns to the double arrow? That means that I can move them now. And you have everything comes out on both sides. You have your uh, rulers that come out from zero so I can make this symmetrical. Okay, let's bring in a design. You're gonna see a lot of this butterfly, I'm afraid. Let's size it just a little bit. And voila. Okay, now let's talk about color. Color for some of us is kind of a, a 
has a little bit of a negative connotation to it. But, but I think there's a lot of things that go on in essentials that help make color a beautiful thing and easier to work with that it merits having a conversation about. So we're going to start by talking about these three buttons here, which have a great deal to do with color. This is my um, thread button that converts all colors to a single thread chart. So um, right now, these are all embroidery or brother embroidery colors. Okay, I use Robus and Anton. So I'm going to click on that and click OK. And it's going to change everything to Robus and Anton. Now, I use Robus and Anton so much that I want to use this as my preferred thread brand. So I'm going to click on use this as my preferred thread brand. Click OK. Then when I get a new design page, go to File, Merge Stitch File, bring in that butterfly again, click on My Preferred Thread Brand, and it automatically converts everything to Robus and Anton Rayon. If I wanted to make this a one color design, I could do that if I wanted a little tone-on-tone -tone action. Okay, so that's these three buttons. Your thread to convert everything to a single thread chart. Your one color to convert an entire design into a monochrome color design. And then your preferred button to click on, to click on and change all of your design colors to your preferred thread palette. Okay, next thing we're going to talk about is under the utility menu. Under there we have a number of things, base design, project advisor, um, send to Solaris or the XP1, send to actually, I think it sends to most any machine. But what I want to talk about is the threads the basic thread and palette editor. Okay, there are a number of things you can do. Say, here I am, I am that Robus and Anton girl. Let's click on my, there we go. Scroll down to get to Robus and Anton. Robus and Anton Rayon. But I don't have the entire collection, so I can check the ones that I do have, that way when I go in here to change a color to something, I don't have to remember, do I have that color or not? I don't remember and go and try to dig them out and find out if you have that color. It's going to show me right here what colors in the collection that I have. Okay. You can check them, uncheck them. What I like to do is I kind of like to use this as a, a shopping list. If I find I'm right now I'm stitching fonts. So I'm using one color like crazy and I'm about to run out. So I would check, check that one color. And then when I come in here and get ready to go to my sewing machine store, I know what color thread it is that I need or what colors mark several. So there's several ways that this section of the thread editor is helpful and very useful. Okay, there's something else I want to show you. Did you know you could create your own custom thread palette? You certainly can. Let's click on this button right here. New thread or palette. It's going to first ask you, would you like to save the current palette? And no, well, I'm going to click yes, and then it's going to open up with my palette, but I'm going to name this palette pansies. 
because right now I'm working on a quilt and it's a pansy quilt. So I'm going to merge some colors from, you guessed it, Robus and Anton. I need a dark purple. I'll type in purple and click go. Pro purple or purple maze. I think I like pro purple better. Click OK. And there it is added that to my thread list, my thread chart. Now I need to add another color. I need a yellow. Oh, this lemon will be pretty. I need a white. This natural white will look nice. And I need another kind of purple, like a lilac color or a lavender. Okay, it doesn't like lavender, so let's try lilac. It does like lilac, only I'm going to use this purple color here. And there we have all the colors needed for my pansy. Now, why would I create a pansy thread chart, you would ask? Oh, and I need some greens. I need at least one or two greens for my leaves and stems. There we go. We'll just put one color green in there for now. Now, again, why would I create a color chart for pansies? Well, I'm currently working on a pansy quilt top, and I'm embroidering a dozen blocks with pansies on it. And I'm not going to get all dozen blocks embroidered in one weekend or one day, so I'm going to create a cup a custom thread chart so then when I stitch a couple blocks today and come back after I go to spend a couple weekends at graduation parties and come back to stitch a couple more blocks I don't have to guess what colors I use they're all right here in my custom thread chart I can save this here it is right here are my pansies when I close this out and open it back up again, go back to utility, go back to threads, there's my pansy still there. I can go to Robus and Anton Rayon. I don't know why this keeps flying shut. There's my pansies. So see, there's a lot of really cool things that are available in this basic thread palette editor. Okay. So now that we've talked about essentials. Let's go back. Let's close this page. We're not going to save any of the stuff we've worked on. Let's go back to our brilliance demo. Let's add enthusiasts to the mix. Okay, now you see I've gotten a couple more buttons. I've got the um, stitch editor tool. I've gotten the align and distribute tool. Um, a number of things. Under the utility menu, I've got instant repeat, mirror times four, carousel, and scatter. Just to kind of give you an idea for those of you that have essentials and want to add enthusiasts and, and put that number in and like, how do I know I have enthusiasts? Well, these are ways you can tell if you have enthusiasts, if it took that number and everything installed as 
um, status quo as it should. A couple of check marks you can look for is the um, four items down here, the base hoop, the stitch editing tool. Those are all things that you can look for to make sure that your enthusiast has installed correctly. Now, a couple of things we want to talk about while we're in enthusiast. I'm going to go to my text button. I'm going to find some scrolly font. This one will work fine. I'm going to hold down my shift key and size that a little bit larger so it could be seen a little bit better. And we're going to go to our utility. And one of the big things to look for if you have enthusiasts is knockdown stitching. Now, you can make your knockdown stitching bidirectional. It means it'll go at an angle one way and then come back and go at an angle the opposite way. So it'll kind of give you a crosshatch. That is really handy and really good to have if you're using a really um, nice, high-quality minky with a lot of nap to it or those towels that are really, really thick, those water-thirsty towels that just have a lot of nap to, it, to them. Bidirectional is the awesome thing to use for those. Otherwise, you can just um, keep the default settings. If you change these and want to go back to defaults, just simply click on the Reset Defaults setting button. Um, reason why, and a lot of people ask me, why do I just do the default? Why do they give me an option to change if I'm just going to use the default? There's going to be an occasion that you may need to change. But we've tested these defaults so they work in 90% of the situations, 90% of the time. So that means 10% of the time, if you're doing something special, you, is the only time you would have to change them. So I'm just going to click OK. It's going to add my knockdown stitching. And there I go. It's going to automatically put it at the first color stop in my design. It's going to stitch first to knock down all that uh, nap and then stitch my font on top of it. I'm going to stitch this in the color to match whatever item I'm stitching on so it will be virtually invisible. And all it will show is my beautiful monogram. And here it goes. Drum roll, please. Wash after wash after wash. So this font will maintain its beauty for many, many, many washings to come. Okay. Real quick, let's get a new page. And let's talk real quick about some of the options that are here in the um, enthusiasts, the utility menu. Let's talk about the instant repeat. Well, let's bring a design onto the design page first. File, merge stitch file. Okay, let's move this up here. Let's go to utility, instant repeat. Instant repeat allows you to tell it how many you want to go across and how many you want to go down. How much space you want between them. If you want to stagger your rows, if you want to stagger your columns, you want to flip every other one, you won't really see it here, or mirror image the alternates. Okay? So that is instant repeat. Mirror times four, 
allows you to, it's just what it says, mirror them times four. I can adjust my angle. Wouldn't that be the cutest little for a monogram for a hand towel? Okay, so that's that one. Let's use the same little design. Let's go back to our utility. Let's go to carousel. And let's There we go. How cute is that? I know, just as cute as it wants to be. Now again, you can rotate these. You can rotate them all. Sometimes when you rotate them, and rotate all of them. You can get them to fit in the hoop with a little bit of rotation. Okay. So that is carousel. And the last one under the utility menu is going to be scatter. And scatter is just what it says it is. It, um, I like the 200 by 200 hoop. It's going to scatter them within the hoop. Adjust the size. Minimum size is going to be 60% of the original. Maximum size is going to be 140% of the original. The spacing is going to be 10 millimeters be, uh, between them. I can adjust all of these. I can auto-rotate them or not. I can random mirror or not. And I can get a new pattern until I find just the one I want for that panel for my Christmas tote bag. Okay, now the next thing I want to talk about while we're in Enthusiast is the, you guessed it, the thread palette. I'm going to go to my utility menu and go to threads. And this works if you have Essentials and Enthusiast, you get the thread palette editor more like a deluxe version, if you will. And there's some fun things you can do with this. Of course, you have your same thing here. I can check or uncheck the ones that I have or the ones that I need to get, depending on how I want to look at it. I can, well, I could do that before too, but in here, let's just talk about, I can hide a certain, say I made my pansies, or I don't use Polystar thread. I can hide that. I don't use Polystar 40 or Exquisite. Or no, let's go to this. No, let's not go to the cotton. I use cotton thread. Let's hide that one. Now when I go out here to my thread palettes those threads are hidden or that thread the thread the poly is is hidden you'd have to follow those steps for each one you want to hide hide but if there's a lot of threads here you don't use and you get frustrated scrolling through this list all the time and you haven't set your preferred thread palette, you can hide the threads you don't use. So just the handful of threads that you do use are selectable. Okay, and that's good in Essentials and Enthusiast. Now let's go back to threads. And let's talk about something that I think is kind of fun to do. And that is creating a variegated thread. 
I'm going to go to my Robosanton RAN, and let's create, since I have all these yellows here, let's create a, let's add a color. Let's make it a three color variegated. Let's make it um, some pink. So I'm going to click on my eyedropper. I'm going to click on variegated one. Click on my eyedropper. Pick this Memphis bell. Click on number two. Click on this pink miss eyedropper. Pink miss. Variegated three. Eyedropper. Rose. Now let's scroll to the bottom of our list. And there's our variegated thread. Now, when you're creating a variegated thread, you want to be able to have that variegated thread in your collection so you can kind of match up the thread colors to create your variegated thread. And then it, it works as a really handy um, preview for how your project is going to look stitched in the variegated thread. The presets for each brand of thread for the length of each individual color is set in each individual color. So um, you might find that some thread brands are going to give you a little bit different variegated look than others. It's because the um, preset for that individual color length is set in that thread brand. Does that make sense? So let's select this. Let's go out of here. Let's get a new design page. Let's find some nice letters. And let's go to our Robosanton thread color. Actually, let's click on the thread chip. Scroll to the bottom of the list. Oh, I've got a plethora of variegated threads that I created. Oh, I'm in the brother. I want to be in Robosanton Rayon. Here we go. Robosanton Rayon. Scroll to the bottom of the list. Here is my variegated thread. Now see that? It looks kind of pretty. I'm not going to lie. Okay, so you can create your own variegated threads with the thread utility. Let's go back to the thread utility. You can also create a, a thread palace. Click on new. And um, say I've got a new thread on the market that's, that's just come out. And it's not in the Embroidian software yet. That's okay. I can name it. We're just going to keep it named my palette for now. I can use the eyedropper. I can go to their website and click on their color chart and select a color. From their color chart to create my own thread palette. I'm going to add a color. 
Again, use the eyedropper. Okay, and then I would be able to fill this information in with the name and the number to actually edit that and make it more accurate. But that is the thread and palette editor in Enthusiasts. So there's a lot of cool information, a lot of cool stuff you can do with that. Okay, let's close this out. I'm not going to save that. Let's close this out. We're not going to save our changes. We're going to go back over to the Embrilliance demo. I'm going to keep Essentials checked because some of these you need a platform to run. So I'm going to keep Essentials as my platform. And I'm going to click on Alpha Tricks. Yeah, I'm saving the best for last. And we're going to open up Alpha Tricks. Alpha Tricks is this little guy right here, this ABC vertical. So if I click on that, I'm going to open up my import font box. And the first thing we're going to talk about is going to be importing a font. So I'm going to say, um, would you like to begin importing a font? Yes, I would. So I'm going to click yes. I'm going to go to my computer where I have a font. Oh my goodness. Okay, I'm going to bring in my uppercase. I'm going to select all of them because I want the entire alphabet, and I'm going to click Import. Then I'm going to go to Add Designs because I want to add the lowercase letters. I'm going to select all of those and click import. And then I'm going to add designs one more time because there are some special characters that I would like to have. And I'm going to keep it to just the basics. I'm going to click the semicolon, hold the control key. I'm going to pick the comma. I'm going to pick the exclamation mark. I'm going to pick the period and the question mark and the quotations. Click import. Now, if I scroll through here, first thing I'm going to do is scroll through, find any letters that have descenders or go below the line and move them down. Kind of, you can kind of eyeball them or you can use this top number right here to line them up with. Q, G goes below the line, J goes below the line, P's and Q's go below the line. And the Y goes below the line. Now my colon should go up a little bit. My comma could go down just a tiny bit. And my quotation marks need to go up. So let's go back to the beginning. Let's select the A. Now there's some tools that are built in here 
that make it easy to map your font. I don't have to click on the keyboard. All I have to do is click map, uppercase, A to Z, and that is map. And you can tell because it's got the small letter up here at the left hand, left top corner of the design. Now here's my lowercase A to Z. Click on that. Now these I am going to have to actually click on the keys on my keyboard. But I know I've got them right by the little symbol that's there. There we go. Now, if this is the no save version, so there would be a save button right here. I would save this font, click on the save button, save this font, and it would be ready to go. It would be in my font list. I could use it and type like it's a keyboard font. Okay, another thing that Alphatrix is good for is renaming your fonts. You notice River Mill has changed the way they name their fonts. They've gone from River Mill to RM. So if I want to take River Mill Embroidery to save this font, it didn't really save it. That's okay. I can. Actually, let's just get rid of the river mill and make it RM Diner 1 inch. And again, I would click on that save button. It would be right here. There would be a save button in the purchase version. There's not a save button in the demo. So we would click on the save button. It would save that name change. So then they would all fall into alphabetical order together under the same heading RM for River Mill. I wouldn't have two alphabetical groupings of those. Okay, that makes sense. Um, talk about baselines. You have the ability to adjust your baseline from bottom to center to top. Center is very, very helpful when you're um, mapping a monogram that has two small letters on the left and right and the large letter in the center. That's also helpful here. I can uh, note which letters when I import them are center, which ones are left and which ones are right and map them accordingly. Okay, there's a lot of buttons here. The letter spacing is typically okay. You can adjust that if you find you have a font where your letters are either on top of each other or too far apart. Same thing with your word spacing. I have had to make some tiny adjustments on those from time to time. Um, hide this font. If I find that I've gotten a bunch of fonts that I don't want to look at anymore, I want to still keep them, but I just say I like River Mill. I've got the Samantha set. Well, let's go with dinner. I've got the one, two, and three inch. See, I use the two inch because I found that I can size down to one inch and size up to three inch. I can hide the one inch size. Okay, but I don't want to hide it. Um, I So I could hide the one and three and just look at the two. A lot of times when you get fonts and you get something new, it's fun to just drag and drop those BX fonts in there and, and just Add them all, the 1 inch, the 1.5 inch, the 2 inch, the 2.5 inch, all those. If they're just a half an inch different people, you, you've got sizing and essentials. That's the best sizing in the market. Remember, that was the first thing we talked about. 
Okay, so that is Alpatrix. I told you we're saving the best for last. We're going to close this out. I'm going to go back to my Brilliant demo. I'm going to click on Density Repair Kit. Okay, this is Density Repair Kit. You notice First thing we'll talk about that you don't you don't notice, but you will when you open your project advisor, is you have this project setting box where I can set a project or tell it no project. Right now it's no project, stitch perfect, no current setting. Let's bring a design in. Let's go to file, merge stitch file. Let's go back to my demo designs. Let's bring that butterfly in one more time. Okay, here is my butterfly. And here is my project advisor. I want to stitch this on some lace, so I may need to make some changes to it. Let's just see. Let's click on lace. Let's click on set project. And yes, it reduced that from 10,647 to 8,390. So it took out quite a bit of the density, so this will stitch effectively on lace. That, folks, is your project advisor on steroids. We like to call it, set it and forget it. Okay, so you'll see that in the project in density repair kit. Let's undo that. Okay, next thing I want to talk about, which I think for people that get density repair kit, don't use the density map enough. I'm going to select my design and select on, click on the density map. And you see how all that design or the majority of it is a lovely blue color. That means it's good to go. Um, if you don't do anything else in density repair kit, but run all of your designs through the density map, you'll save yourself a lot of headache and a lot of hard work for nothing because you'll be able to see problems in a design before you take them to your machine and realize that that design was denser than dense and could have been adjusted with the um, clean up stitches button, which is also added in density repair kit. So let's just go through this design and let's use the clean up stitches button and see if it takes any, oh, it took 200 stitches out. And just to give you an idea of what stitches the clean up stitches takes out, it's when you have areas that overlap and a lot of times they put in a tie in the start and stop, even though the start and stop are gonna be covered by another color, it doesn't really need that start and stop. It will remove those small stitches. So there's no way your needle can be deflected or hit those or can cause a bird's nest or anything like that because it will remove all those little cumbersome tie-offs and knots and things like that. Okay. Let's see what else can we talk about in density repair kits. It's one of my favorites. Um, the project advisor, the cleanup stitches, and the most important is the density map. I can't emphasize enough how important the density map is. Oh, and we didn't talk about, let's talk about remove hidden stitches. Remove hidden stitches is actually a An essentials feature, but it's also in Density Repair Kit. 
So I'm going to select all. You notice I've taken my wonderful uh, butterflies and copied and pasted them on top of each other. Now let's use the density map. And you see how I have all that red and yellow in the middle? That's going to be a problem, folks. So we're going to cl click on our Remove Hidden Stitches. And it will remove those hidden stitches there in that part of the design. Let's try that one more time. See? That, my dear folks, is how the Remove Hidden Stitches works. Remember, it comes in Essentials and Density Repair Kit. Okay, last thing I need to show you, there's not much to talk about, but let's close this. Not going to save any of our changes. We couldn't save them if we wanted to. Is Thumbnailer. Thumbnailer is this neat little app or program that allows you to see thumbnails of your designs in Windows Explorer. So if I wanted to come over here and click on my demo designs folder, there are all my designs in my demo design folder. I'm not in any software, it's just Thumbnailer is allowing me to preview them. before opening them up in my software. Okay. Well, that is all I have for you today. I would like to thank you for your time. Mm -hmm.